All right, Shalom Rastafari, Aol, Xavier Marish. Um, greetings to sons and daughters, the brothers and sisters. Um, uh, Melkam Astes Rio, uh, uh, Yom Kippur greetings for this Yom Kippur ring. Greetings for this um, this uh, Eve. This is actually well, not the Eve. This is the Eve. This is the Eve, but the day has already. The day was the twenty, was the twenty six, right? And we're recording this in what in the West is the evening, but really they say this is Wednesday evening or night, but really it is for us. It is Thursday evening, and this is interesting because um, the twenty seventh of September is um, um, Meskel, or the finding of the true cross. And if you look at um, uh, one or two, a couple of the, of the previous vids on the Ethiopian World Net, I don't know whether you'll be watching this on Ethiopian World Net, or if you might have to find this on Rastafari Sabbatico. Rastafari Sabbatico, right? Sabbatico. So that's the site that we're broadcasting, the main faith-based um, um, dissertations, reasonings, and teachings, and feedings, the Sabbath, uh, Sabbatical feedings, and readings, and the Torah base, and the, and the, the, the Wengel, the good news, the revelation, that's where you'll find it. So hopefully we'll be able to post this both here and there, and other um, co-laborers will also post it elsewhere. And please, if, if you are able to and you understand the technology and you're willing, um, please do, Yovas, as well as download as many of the, of the vids from the Ethiopian World Net as possible. And those who have um, heard the call that we had put out through other means when we were um, suspended, rather, you know, put on probation, rather, um, by the YouTube's uh, community um, for our freedom of speech, which someone regarded it as someone hated it, and they regarded it as offensive. And you know all these all these kind of laws, and you know how it says that they 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 will think to change laws and times, and how they they frame mischief by the use of you know, the law or twisting the law in strange ways. And we see a lot of this going on when we look into the conspiracy, so-called theories, and not, not just theories, but the reality of what's going on in this end of the Gentile world dominion, as well as the end of the church age, or what one's called the end of the world, or the end of the seclura, all right, as the true new world order, not their new world order, but that's a whole other topic matter. See a previous vid that we did on the true new world order, the real new world order, what we're going through now is like the old world order uh, 3.4, 2.3 or something like that. That's what, this was the old world order. You know, and they are desirous to um, appropriate for themselves the true new world order. But now, how does all this connect with Yom Kippur? So we did the first part of this as well as the short vid um, with the shofar, with the, with, with the blowing of the shofar which traditionally is done at the end of um, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur Rin. But now, how does this connect, right? Uh, What's the connection of this, right? Um, this, this so-called Old Testament, this Old Covenant feast and festival. As I said in the first part, I got like a 49-page um, document here, and I would love to have the opportunity to go through this, you know, each of the, the articles that I have here from some search and um, also to correct um, to correct the word, you know, because this is from some other sources. But generally speaking, it's putting us in the right direction when it's speaking of Yeshua, when it's speaking of our Lord and Savior, right? Because it's, it's through Him, right? It's through Him. It's through the, the, the Son of God that we get the true atonement, Right, the true atonement, and through His worthy sacrifice for us fallen humanity, you understand, and in particular for the black man. This is the black male that they don't want to be under. You over when they slander and blaspheme 
you know, call it extortion, being under the black male. Only the demons think that it's extortion, if you over that. Now, you know, only the fallen angel and demons think it's extortion in that, in, in that sense. And, you know, this is going to the very beginning of the mysteries um, of God and Christ. However, let's continue where we were and bring up the, this document that we have right here. And we had touched on Fasica, right? Fasica in the first part. So this is the Yom Kippur then coming forward, right? Coming forward the 27th of September, according to the, 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 the solar, right? Or the true Christian, the Ethiopian, cannot put a um, computation of days is, is Meskel, or the finding of the true cross, the finding of the true cross. So make a note of that, brothers and sisters, and do a little more study on the finding of the true cross. But the real overstanding is in the Torah, is in, is in the law, because he is the living law, Yeshua HaMoshiach. He is the living Torah. He is the living law. All right? Now, um, let's see if we have some of these, uh, if we can open some more of this art right here so that it will be, uh, oh, is that the picture right there? You, you recall this right, this picture right here, don't you? Let's see if we can blow this up. Okay, let's scroll it right here. Now, the whole picture is very, very interesting. The whole picture is, is, is the full picture where he is where Jesus Christos, right, this is the true Jesus Christos of Ethiopia. This, this is how the, the Kedusan, the saints, the holy ones, the Christians, this is how they um, see him from the holy time. We're in the secular time. Ethiopian has, Ethiopia has fallen and must repent. You know, and that is why there is so much woyo, woyo, and woyane. You know, and the solution for the woyane is the repentance, right? Um, and this is why Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is significant. And this is why also the, the finding of the true cross, how all this links together when we are able to remove the veil. You understand that veil in the reading of the Old Testament. That's why we've been touching on it in many of the vids recently um, speaking on that and not even overstanding it fully but now as we continue to walk the way we get to recognize oh Gita Adonai that's why you show me this or that's why you understand um, or that's what that means right there or this is the reason why I was wondering why am I studying this sometimes you wonder why are you reading this or why are you studying this and it's interesting but if you are if you are a born-again son or daughter, the Holy Spirit is guiding you. You understand? And, and just walk humbly with thy God and King of Kings. And he will, he will bring all those things to your overstanding in due time. Now, I, I should have brought that picture, actually. I thought I had opened that particular picture. It's the picture that you actually see where, where um, the Ethiopian... Christ, or the Ethiopian Jesus, as they would say, right, is lifting up Adam and Eve. In other words, if you look at his two hands, it's cut off right there, but he's lifting up Adam and Eve, you understand, from Sheol, or from the underworld, from hell, as we also are lifted up. We are reborn, right? So in these hands right here, we'll bring up the picture, either in this portion or the next portion. So this could be what the first trumpet, right, or it might as well be the last. You over that? So, the, so remember, the, 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 the Old Testament, it speaks of Jesus Christos. You understand? And, and the Old Testament feasts and festivals also bespeak of the Son of God. And who is the Son of God in the relationship to Yom Kippur? What are the so-called um, Jews, both the other Jews, black Jews and white Jews, who have not received the Moshia, what are they missing? You know what I'm saying? What are they missing? It's interesting, I was just mentioning before we had, um, um, before the first part had, had, had finished, I had mentioned that um, I was watching a couple of programs on TV, 
you know, like, you know, the news talking about Yom Kippur and how um, the Jews who call themselves Jews are celebrating it and they're like, I fast and I'm saying I'm sorry to people and, and the cold and the nidre, you know, where all vows are forgiven. It's very interesting. And you go to the Wikipedia page to get an overview of it. But now to really understand the context, the fulfillment of that, it is in our, our, our um, Judeo-Christian or the true Tawahedo, the true Ritua Haimeno. This is why the 27th, notice that, the 27th, this is 2012, so it's a significant year. We're seeing certain signs, right? So there's a Yom Kippur sign for us as faithful Rastafari, as, as Ethiopian Hebrews, as Black Beta Israel, right? And even for the righteous Gentiles, for all who will receive the truth, all who will receive the love of the truth. And this is another also another picture you can see how these are two different artists, right? Two different artists right here. But you can see that even with the two different artists, there's some similarities of, uh, of features. And this is the indigenous. This is not the fake counterfeit um, Romanist artwork that has crept in and put the Ethiopian um, um, uh, little ones, the children. And we got some, oh, man, this, I'm thinking about they're walking around with these pictures of Caesar Borgias, you know what I'm saying, you know, and, and, and this is where the apostasy has fallen to since the godless and creeping coup against the king of kings. Now, I know we're going to speak about Yom Kippur, but I want to show you how all of these things are connected, Yovas, and we have to receive the spirit so we can see how all of these things are connected. Now, um, let's go forward a little bit more because I know I have a, another picture. It's probably going to pop up any, any moment right now. And when you see that one, that's what, what, what shows you the resurrection, the resurrection of our patriarchs, of, of Adam and Eve, of the black man and the black woman. And see, it's important for the black man and the black woman to truly rise in grace in order that there's even a possibility of salvation in this fallen world. You know what I'm saying? This is why the whole use of, we saw a program about the Black Awakening. And it was interesting. It's, it's very interesting. Um, on a spirituality level, um, it's basically the reasons why we've been teaching on spiritual warfare. But the reason that they call it black, people say, why do they call it black? Because, see, the demons, the fallen angel, is still about that old-time warfare that uh, Kubr and the guest points out to us in chapter 100 of the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, right, and, and, and that particular document right there. Okay, we'll, we'll come forward to this. Um, okay, there's, there's some of the pics right there again, but I want to see, get the fullness picture where you can see um, the Ethiopian Jesus raising up Adam and Eve during the first millennium after the crucifixion. Um, that's all another related subject matter there as well. And here we have some of the, um, some of the, even the Vatican has an image that they say is one of the oldest images of Jesus Christ, but they keep it behind some, some like barb, you know, barbed wire kind of thing. And the people have to crawl up on their knees and everything because keeping them in, in, in spiritual bondage. Remember we, we spoke about in the first part coming out of Egypt, right, the house of bondage. That house of bondage wasn't like slavery in America, Yovas. It wasn't like slavery, what we'll call slavery in America. That house of bondage was spiritual, the church. You understand the church? In fact, we saw a program that, we saw the vid while we were doing some downloading um, from the YouTube, and there was a vid, right, let's see if we get, if we get that name of the vid. And we haven't looked at it yet, but the title intrigued us. The title was Christianity, that slave religion, trauma-based, and we couldn't see the rest of the name there, uh, but it says um, Christianity. Now, of course, Christianity and Christ gets beat up on, you understand, because many people don't, don't recognize the counterfeit, that there is the true and there is the false. 
and they and they um 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 get it twisted. In other words, you, you know, where they confuse the true for the false. And this is one reason why the scripture says that we are to have we are to have discernment. But let's go forward here and let this let this search right over here for a moment. Um, set up this search right here. Um, all right. Let's see. So here, here, here is where we were at. We were speaking about Rosh Hashanah, right? And then we was about to get to Astes Rio, Astes Rio, Astes Rio, which is the Ethiopic for that which atones. But now, what does atone mean? Is atone does atone mean the same thing as forgiveness? Some people think so. It's not really. It's not really. There's a big difference. And see, in the Old Testament, when we understand that, how, what did Christ do to fulfill? When he said, Tefetz Amen, Bemeskel, uh, when he said, Tefetz Amen, what did that mean? That it is finished. What did he mean that it is finished upon the cross? So let's, let's keep this moving right here, right? And let's see if we can find this picture. What did he mean that it is finished? What was finished? What is the context of what he meant by it is finished on the cross? It is, it is complete. The way is now cleared. You understand? The way is now cleared for salvation to the, to the fallen children of men. The way is now cleared, and that way was cleared through the cross. And this is one of the reasons why, from the Ethiopic, right, from the Ethiopic, let's see if we can bring... This up right here from the Ethiopic. Close this. Right. Um, we might have to close up some of this so we get some more um, room right here. This is uh, the old Hebrew right here. Uh, this is how we should also look forward once we return to the land. You understand? Know Back to the land. You understand? Know you know? Uh huh. Okay, we'll close that up. Um, here we go right here. What did he mean upon the cross that it is finished? Right here we go right here. It is finished. You know we have to disregard some of the whitewashing here. You understand? Know in, in grace, you know we disregard the whitewashing in grace while we get the the fullness of the of 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 the story. Right while we get to understand. All right, it is finished. You see, it is finished. What does that mean? So now while we go through this, let us read the um. To get a better idea of Astes Rio, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And here Schofield reference does very well. This is a footnote down here on page uh, 157 in Leviticus, chapter 23. Um, but if you have the book or the PDF, um, 157, the Day of Atonement, verses 26 to verse 32. It says, the day is the same as described in Leviticus, chapter 16. But here the stress, or we can say the emphasis, is laid upon the sorrow and repentance of Israel. In other words, the prophetical feature is made prominent. There's a prophetical feature, and there's a prophetical feature even in the um, Belui Kidan Sina Sirat. In, in the Old Testament ceremonial, in the Old Testament ritual, or in the Old Testament um, um, order, right? The science of the order, the sinat right? The feature, the prophetical feature is made prominent, and that looks forward to the repentance of Israel, to the repentance of the once lost but now found black sheep of the family. Right, the repentance of Israel. Israel must repent. The black beta Israel, the black man must repent for, for his family to repent, to have the to have the opportunity. It's only the black mother must repent for, for our children to have a positive a positive light shining on the way. It's gonna be for them to choose. Choose this day. You understand? But it says train up a child in the way that he or she should go and when they are old or mature. They will not depart from it. And many of us can even testify to that, even though Satan had wanted to sift us, you understand, like, like we, right? And we were like the Peter, 
we, we you know we we had that 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 Peter effect, right? Um, but the prophetical feature is made prominent, and that looks forward to the repentance of Israel after her regathering, after her regathering, her in gathering. Now we've been speaking about the in gathering. Sukkot is coming up in about five days. So between Yom Kippur this year, 2012, and Sukkot or Metalet, Baale Metalet in the Gutters, or Yadas Baal in the Amharic, or Sukkot where they build the Sukkahs or the booths in in the Ibrayist Kwankwa, right? Between that is Meskel is the finding of what kind of a cross, any kind of a cross, any kind of an X? No, the finding of the true cross in spirit and in truth. You know what I'm saying? The true cross in spirit and in truth. Now, I hope you over brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, we've, we've, we've taught on that and we can get into detail. Some new people might be watching this and they need to check out the other videos where we're building up on this particular subject matter. We haven't put them together um, as of yet, because we're just flowing in the Holy Spirit. Now, as ones and ones have opportunity to co-work with us and to support the root, you understand, and to really, you know, work together in committees and units in a responsible, those brothers and sisters who want to be and want to show and prove their responsibility, then um, we say, we say, our will and our main and make I and I work together on that and let's, you know, let's achieve, let's do, make our wills obedient to his good influence and to avoid evil. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 to 10. Now, we haven't touched on Deuteronomy chapter 30 just yet, but we're about to, as, as this year is summing up, as we're coming up to the, to the um, Sitzha or Rit, or to uh, Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah, joy of the Torah, and to the, the new cycle of Torah readings and, and, and feedings. But now, there's a prophetical aspect. Every year that we're going over the same Torah portions, if we are in what Hebrews 10 and 20 says, the new and the living way, there's a prophetical aspect if the veil is moved, removed from our eyes. And some people say, oh, we're reading the same old thing. Because they got the veil over their eyes. I mean, it's like they're hoodwinked. They, they haven't removed the veil really over their hearts, the word says. The veil is over their hearts, Right? preparatory to the second advent of the Mashiach, the second advent of the Messiah, and the establishment of the kingdom. Now, see the connection between the trumpet in Joel chapter 2, verse 1, the trumpet or the shofar, right? And we had highlighted the trumpet and the shofar. Let's see if we can highlight it again right here. That's a sample, an example right there, right? Um, so Joel chapter 2, verse 1, right? And the morning, so the blowing of the first trumpet, right? Remember Yeshua HaMoshiach, the first advent. And then there was a, a period of a morning which follows in verses 11 to 15 in Joel chapter 2, right? Joel chapter 2. Also in uh, Zacharias chapter 12, verses 10 to 13, in connection with the atonement or the astes rio, right, of Zechariah chapter 13 and 1. Now, it says historically, right, the fountain, quote, end quote, the fountain or the in that's mentioned, if you look in the Hebrew, fountain will be in or oin, depending on how you read the, you know, how you read the, 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 the vowel, the nuka. The nequit, right? You know how it's pointed, right? The fountain, the ein or the in, right? They almost like in Gedi or ein Gedi, the the fountain of Gedi, or actually I think that's a 
that's a roe or a deer, if I'm correct, of um, Zechariah chapter um, 13, or um, Midakwa, chapter 13 and 1, was opened at the crucifixion. So this fountain, this eye, right, let's, let, let's understand it, this fountain or this particular eye, now it says, historically the fountain of Zechariah chapter what? Chapter 13 and 1. Let us, let, us, let us do a little bit of study right here. Let's go to Zechariah, right? Zechariah chapter 13 um, and, and 1. Zacharias, right? Zacharias, Asura, Sauce, and 1. You see it right here? It's up here, okay? It says, it says, Tinbete Zacharias, Raf, Asura, uh, source it says Beziak and Ledawit Baitana the Yerusalem Leminoru Ka Khatiat Ka Rikuset Yemianat A Minch Yikafetal Yikafetal Right? So there will be a fountain it says in that day there shall be a fountain open to who? It says the house, the Beta Dawit or Dawit Beit, to the house of David. Now, we know the house of David is the house of Kedemawi, Haile Selassie is the house of Rastafari. It's our house in the middle of the street. Our house. It is, it's our house, right? And to the inhabitants now of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem. Are we to interpret this as Addis Ababa or, or in its fullest sense of Africa, the overseen of the when the righteous Africans, the over the righteous Africans, as his imperial majesty so clearly states. Now, let's look up this right here. Okay, you see this over here? So we're going to the IOTA, the IOTA program, and we're looking down here where it says King James KJV, right? The KJV with Strong's numbers. This is when we're doing study. All right, so if someone says, if you say, oh, you check out the Strong number on that, and they say, huh? Well, you know, they're not really being fully diligent, but pray and help them if they're willing, right? Now, it says right here, it says fountain 4726, because I, I said something right there. And I, now, here it says Mekor, 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 right? So the other in ein is in a, another sense right there. The Mekor, Maokore, right? Properly something dug. Something dug, i.e., in a general a general source of water, even when naturally flowing. It's like the mummy of the Chisisat, in a sense, uh, Ethiopia, right, or or even um, so-called Victoria Fell. I mean, falls, right. Um, then it says also of tears, also of blood by euphemism. You see this right here. By euphemism, it's dem, dem, like dem man. Right, them, you know, um, blood, or in the Hebrew, dam, right? By euphemism of the female of uh, pudenda, pudenda. Yeah, I guess you know where, you know, we're not getting into that right now, but there's a euphemistic sense of this that needs to be um, properly um, overstood, too. That also has to do with um, an intimate part of the female's body. Now, figuratively, of happiness, wisdom, progeny, progeny. Mm -hmm. And all must come through that gate, if you overstand. Fountain, an issue, a spring, a wellspring. A wellspring. All right? A wellspring. So it's the makor and not the in kind of uh, fountain used. And so that's why I went here, because the Spirit wanted to even clarify. What I said is correct. But not in this particular context. It's the Makor, right? The Makor or the Makore, right? Speaking of the fountain in that um, sense, Bamarinya the Minch. Mm -hmm. So now it says that this was open. If you look at the Schofield uh, reference note, we'll turn to page 158. It's open at the Siklet or at crucifixion. But it was rejected by the Jews. It was rejected by the, um, the pharisaical Jews of the time of Yeshua, HaMoshiach, right? And basically, it was, it's, it's like 
how this good news of, of the King of Kings in this time by, it is rejected by black the black churches, the black churches, the apostate churches, the black apostate churches, they also reject. Mm -hmm. They reject this. So it's in the same sense, they reject Christ and his kingly character. They reject Negus and Negus, Ketamawi Hadassalat. They reject Ethiopia's testimony. And you see a lot of blasphemy and insult and error. You know, said even on the YouTube, if one's like, oh, uh, I'm proof right so far, Hadassalati fallacy or. I thought they false God or this or that or next thing. You understand? You know, they don't know who we be. You understand? They don't know the truth of his divine majesty. Right? So they are the enemies for the gospel's sake, as Paul says, but they are beloved because of the, the fathers, because of our ancestors. You understand? And we even mention or, or show the picture. These are our ancestors right here. You understand? See these ancestors right here? These are our ancestors, the black Jews of Harlem, all right, the Ethiopian Hebrews, you understand, who, who recognize the authority of Negus and Negus and recognize Ethiopia in the divine equation, all right, these are our ancestors. You see them blowing the shofar. This is back in the 60s, all right, so when you see people say, oh, you're trying to do the shofar and that's a European Jew doing it there, you don't know, well, shut up. You have to tell them shut up. They have to shut up. Mm-hmm. Because Christ doesn't, he doesn't philosophize with the demons, you know, they have to shut up and come out, you know what I mean, come out. So they went out from us to prove that they was not all of us, all right, that's why they went out from us, right. Um, now, so they was rejected by the Jews or by the faulty religionists, by the religious authorities of the first century, the first century time, right. Um, it says, but rejected by the Jews of that. And the succeeding centuries, even to this present time, so when we saw the clip where some of the Jewish, European Jewish boys and girls were talking about, like, they, 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 they was, like, almost lost. They didn't know what they were doing. And then when you look at what they have written even in Yom Kippur, apart from Christ, you know, if you study Yom Kippur on the Internet and you study some sites and some of them are able to see Christ in it, you know, saying it makes more sense out of it. But if you study it just from the old so-called Judaic or the old... Um, um, the Kibbutz and Gesser is the, the, the foolish Jews' perspective. You understand? The ones that deny the Moshiach. You understand? That's what you get. Right? So this is in perfect alignment with the true biblical hermeneutic here. It says, after the regathering of Israel, the fountain will be efficaciously opened, right? Opened to Israel. After we come into our consciousness of who we are. You understand? This fountain is once again opened to us. And that is the meaning there. That is the meaning there of the Yom Kippur, the fullness of it. Now, let's just go to our chart again. Let's see if, the, if, if, if this pick had opened up, this pick that we were looking for. Let's see if it opened up. We decided to look up Adam and see if we have it under Adam and Eve, under Adam and Eve pick. You understand um, where you see, um, in fact, we even see the one with Adam Clayton Powell receiving the, the Mescal, the cross. That's also another, another link to that. And this is real things. This is real time. Not a picture, not a painting, not somebody's imagination, but it's the fulfillment, right? It's the fulfillment, right? Um,